You'll only ever find incredible archaeological finds in our videos. We skip over the boring ones and march straight past the mundane as we scour the world for the best. Whenever we found enough of them, we package them up all neatly and deliver them to you in fact-filled videos of ancient wonders like this one. Scientists have been racing against time to rescue our first discovery ever since they found it. It's a 1,300-year-old ship that was found in France, and it's of an exceptionally rare design. The vessel could be enormously significant to historians and researchers, but it might not last long enough for them to examine it. In their current state, the oak, chestnut, and pine beams of the wrecked vessel are so delicate that they have to be watered every 30 minutes to ensure they don't disintegrate. The 40-foot-long boat was found on the banks of the Garonne River in southwest France in early 2022, but the building materials it's made from hadn't been touched by the air or the light since the day it sank. That makes them extremely vulnerable. Radiocarbon dating indicates that the vessel sank between 680 and 720 and is remarkably advanced based on what we know about the French naval architecture of the Middle Ages. It might have been the first ship of its kind, or an experimental vessel that was deemed a failure after the sinking. Unless we can stabilize the wreck enough to examine it properly, we might never know. Kalat Bani Hamand was once a formidable fortified city in Algeria. There's nothing left of it other than its broken ruins today. But during the 11th century, this was the first capital of the mighty Hamadi dynasty, situated in a strategically important location in the Honda Mountains. Described by many historians as the original and perhaps the greatest ever fortified Muslim city, Kalat Bani Hamad was designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1980. The walls inside the town cover a distance of more than four miles, protecting four residential complexes and what's said to be the second largest mosque ever built in Algeria. Historians have noted that the mosque is visually similar to the Grand Mosque of Kerouan and its 20-foot-tall minaret and have wondered if that great work inspired this one. Archaeological digs have been carried out within the town many times over the years and have yielded goods like jewels, gold coins, terracotta statues, and other artifacts, indicating that those who lived within the city enjoyed a good quality of life for the era. However, the confederation of Arabian tribes known as the Banu Halal drove many residents away even before the town was attacked and ruined by the Almohads in 1152. Speaking of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, next up we have the Dilmun Burial Mounds. This is a collection of ancient necropolises on the main island of Bahrain. They're called the Dilmun Burial Mounds because they date back to the time of the Dilmun culture, some 5,000 years ago. Bahrain was recognized as a place with an unusually high number of human burials even during ancient times and is home to the ancient world's largest cemetery. It's thought that there are over 350,000 ancient grave mounds here. Creating them would have been an enormous project, but it's probable that the local community created them then added to them over a period of many centuries. The graves are neither all of the same era nor the same style. Although they look similar from the outside, attempts to carry out further research on the burial mounds are often blocked by religious fundamentalists in the area, who believe them to be un-Islamic and have demanded that they be concreted over so new housing areas can be built. If the fundamentalists win, we might never know who created these mounds or why they chose to bury their dead in this distinctive manner. Okay, so strictly speaking, our next discovery isn't an archaeological find, it's a paleontological find, but we include it because it's fascinating. In July 2019, scientists found the femur of an enormous dinosaur in France. The bone is 6 feet and 6 inches long. If this is just its femur, imagine how big the full dinosaur must have been. Experts are fairly sure that this thigh bone comes from a sauropod, which is a dinosaur that lived on plants. Sauropods are among the largest land-dwelling creatures ever to exist on planet Earth and were most common in the late Jurassic era. This is one of the best preserved sauropod bones that scientists have ever seen. 
It's in such good condition that it's still possible to see the insertion points of muscles and tendons, as well as scars on the bone. Dinosaur expert Ronan Elaine says that the creature, which lived and died around 140 million years ago, would have weighed around 50 tons when it was alive. It's difficult to say how large a full-size sauropod would have been, because scientists are yet to find a complete skeleton. But based on the bits and pieces they've discovered so far, it wouldn't be unreasonable to suggest a length of around 85 feet from nose to tail. The skeleton known as the Guadalupe woman appears to be that of a normal human female. The problem with that is that it can't be, because the skeleton is 28 million years old. This impossible problem has been troubling scientists and historians since the 19th century. In 1810, the British Army seized the island of Guadalupe from the French and discovered the skeleton encased within a slab of solid rock. They sent it back to England for examination. There, the scientists of the time confirmed it to be the skeleton of an adult woman between 30 and 35, missing her head and feet. The problem with that is that the rock is impenetrable and hasn't been touched since the Miocene age. There's no way the skeleton could have got in there unless it was already there when the rock formed. The creationists of the 19th century seized upon this and claimed it as evidence of the biblical Genesis flood. We know that this can't be true as it's merely the Hebrew version of the universal flood myth. But how can there be a human skeleton in a 28 million year old block of stone? Nim Li Punit is one of the best preserved and most important ancient Mayan sites in South America. It dates back to the Maya Classic period and can be found in what's now the Toledo district of Belize. Locals sometimes refer to it as the top hat, which is a reference to the headdress found on the largest stella sculpture at the site. Archaeological evidence at the site of Neem Lipunit suggests that it was settled in the 4th century and enjoyed its peak years between the 5th and 8th, reaching a maximum population of around 7,000 people. It was abandoned along with all the other Mayan settlements in this area when the Mayan civilization began to decline shortly after the 8th century began. We still don't know why that happened or where the bulk of the Mayan people went. Namely, Punit is also a special place because it became the first ancient site in Belize to be excavated and examined by archaeologists from outside the country in 1976. Clay pots and large jade pendants bearing Mayan hieroglyphs were extracted from the ground during that project, but it seems that almost all the personal effects that were once at the site were taken when the people left, leaving only the buildings and the mysterious stele. There are plenty of ancient rock carvings in Bulgaria, but none quite so odd as the Madara Rider in Kaspichin. It was carved around 1300 years ago, and for some reason the artist who created it decided to carry out their work more than 70 feet above ground level. Quite how they did that is unknown, as there was no such thing as a climbing harness back then. Their artwork depicts a hunter on a horse standing triumphantly over a fallen lion while an eagle and a dog look on. The quality of the work isn't outstanding, but the fact that it's on the side of an almost vertical cliff makes it fascinating. Archaeologists think that it was carved somewhere close to the year 710 based on the inscriptions that surround it, which record events that happened in the early 8th century. The events are connected to paganism, which suggests that there might have been a sacred pagan site prior to the arrival of Christianity in the country. The Madeira Rider is considered to be a national icon in Bulgaria and has in the past been stamped on the nation's coinage. No matter where in the world we live, one of the things that we all have in common with people on the other side of the world is that our ancestors created petroglyphs. Every ancient human culture did it to a greater or lesser degree, and there are often striking similarities between petroglyphs that were created thousands of miles apart by people who can't possibly ever have met. Some of the most remarkable petroglyphs in North America can be found at the appropriately named Petroglyph Provincial Park in British Columbia, Canada. 
The park was specifically created to ensure the protection of a collection of petroglyphs that were found within it close to the estuary of the Nanaimo River in 1948. Experts who've studied the glyphs say that they mostly date to the 10th century, although some could be older. The images are a mixture of humans, animals, sea creatures, and mythological beings that reflect the culture and beliefs of the First Nations Coast Salish and Snunimux people who made them. It was common for First Nations people to create high concentrations of glyphs like this in places where they thought the forces of nature were especially strong. For example, a rock formation or a waterfall. There's neither a rock formation nor a waterfall in Petroglyph Provincial Park, but perhaps the river estuary was enough to inspire these ancient artists to go about their work. As we're talking about rock art left behind by ancient people, let's talk about the Estuvan Salmi rock paintings of Ristina, Finland. You'll find them by the shores of Lake Yovesi, which branches off from the larger Lake Saima. The very existence of the paintings is something of a mystery, as they're 33 feet above the water level of the lake and impossible to access by foot. The people who made them thousands of years ago would have found reaching the position even more difficult, as the lake was even higher. Finland officially recognizes 70 of the paintings as part of the site, but some people say there are more that ought to be included. It hasn't been lost on historians that the rock that most of the artists painted on looks a little like a human head, and may have been selected for that reason by the artists who created these paintings about 5,000 years ago. Ancient artifacts like amber statuettes of the old gods Aka and Uko have been retrieved from the bottom of the lake close to the rock, strongly implying that this was a cult or ritual site. Sometimes an archaeological discovery takes time. If we're talking about the largest Anglo-Saxon treasure discovery in the history of the British Isles, the time it takes is 30 years. That's how long it's been between the discovery of the first gold coins that make up this treasure hall and the most recent. It's now been determined that all 131 coins, which have come from the same field in West Norfolk, were buried at the time and so can be considered part of the same collection. It seems that the coins, which are mostly Frankish tremises, were buried somewhere close to the end of the 6th century. Only 100 such coins had been found in the country's history prior to the announcement of this discovery, so the number on the archaeological record has effectively doubled. A few coins from the Byzantine Empire are also included in the hoard, as are a Bracteate pendant and a gold ingot. Some of the pieces are missing as David Cockle, an off-duty police officer and amateur metal detectorist, attempted to sell his finds on the black market rather than declaring them as he should have done. He was fired from his job and went to jail for 16 months for his crimes. Back on the topic of discoveries that might be relevant to parts of the Bible, here's the Tel Dan steel. It's around 2,850 years old and was discovered in 1993 by the Jewish archaeologist Abraham Byron at an undisclosed site in northern Israel. The stone fragment is well known among biblical scholars because of its Aramaic inscription. Translating the inscription reveals that the stone was erected to honor a victory by the forces of an ancient king of Aram over Jehoram, son of Ahab and king of the house of David. It's possible to interpret the words as a direct reference to King David of the Bible, although skeptics point out that David is hardly an uncommon name. And just because there was a house of David doesn't mean it was the house of David as described in the Bible. There also has to be a degree of willingness to interpret the text in this specific way to end up with this specific translation. Regardless of that, the steel was considered important enough to be extracted from the place where it was found and transported to the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, where it remains to this day. Our last amazing discovery takes us to the United States of America, where a wooden hunting bow was found in an Alaskan lake in March 2022. The bow is a little over 50 inches long and is in remarkably good condition for an artifact that's been underwater for more than 500 years. 
The bow was retrieved from Lake Clark National Park and Preserve in the southwest of Alaska by park rangers before being sent to scientists in Anchorage for further analysis. It's the first hunting bow from this era to be found within several hundred miles of Lake Clark. The bow is made from spruce, and there are signs that it may have been made in the Alatique style. But this isn't certain, and modern-day Native American tribal leaders haven't been able to identify it. The fact that nothing like this has ever been found in the area before suggests that it might have found its way to the region through trade rather than being manufactured here. But wouldn't artifacts like this rot away so quickly, it's just as possible this is the only one that survived the passing of the centuries. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.